protect yourself against infectious diseases like coronavirus and lifestyle diseases like high blood pressure using ultra modern medical equipment such as face masks, N95 and triple face masks. Medical coverall suits and face shield masks prevents your body from getting in contact with the virus or bacteria. Often check your body temperature using infrared thermometer. Check your blood pressure using automatic blood pressure machines. This message is brought to you by Leviton Investments Limited, importers and distributors of high quality medical equipment located at Arua Park Plaza Shop number 619 and 620 Bench Wanoka Street. Leave it on. Caring for your health. Welcome to the show, it's Man and Markets, and I'm Charles Boyd, your host. Now, very interesting developments coming out of the oil and gas subsector. Of course, last week we saw Tanzania signing a host government agreement with Total, who are the lead company in the oil pipeline project, the East Africa oil pipeline project, which is supposed to see or be a major step towards the development of Uganda's oil and gas subsector. But we'll be discussing that a little later in our subsequent shows. Once again, welcome to the show. Now, majority of Ugandans are what you define as children. Indeed, the median age in Uganda is 15 years. Now, this brings opportunities and challenges. Today, we're trying to look at the opportunities that a children population presents. We're picking the mind of a pundit in this area to find out what you can do and how you can tap into this opportunity. <music> I personally don't think that industry is focusing a lot more on this younger generation we talk about. As you yourself said, Uganda is really mainly young children and children who are growing up. And most times when we see different hospitality industries coming up, hotels and let's say different small gardens, we see them mainly focusing on the adults more. But very few places are actually focusing on children. What they don't understand is children actually push parents to consume more. You, never, you can never be with a child and the child is pulling a tantrum in public. You always give in to what they have. So this is a market that is easily tapped in, but it's not being made, uh, the people are not making advantage of. Here at Grand Parklos, something we have decided to do is market on the fact that children are literally a drivers of consumption, among the drivers of consumption. We've decided to come up with a whole garden specifically for, specifically for children, a garden focused for children, call it the kids park. They have their swings, they have bouncing castles, they have enough room to run around and, and not actually be injured or be limited by how much space. I would say, again, you lose out on customers because at the end of the day, so many people are giving birth and so many people have children these days. And as I said, a lot of population is young. So that means you have families. I'm a parent, or even if I was a parent myself, I'm not going to take my child to a place that is not child friendly. So you end up losing out on that customer that you could have had just because your child play area was not big enough, was not good enough, did not accommodate for that child. So it definitely is something that people should actually focus on in order not to lose customers. Um, in terms of quality, I think, again, most restaurants or most hotels, hospitality industry are focused a lot more on, let's say, children's menus, which is something great. But at the end of the day, a child does not care about what they eat. Sure, yes, they do, but more time they want to play, they want to scream, they want to run away, they want to be able to have that freedom to ride a bicycle. And I think that's something that many people have not tapped in. I would say 
It's, it's great. I mean, a lot of our population do end up living in Kampala, so we always tend to find. But sometimes you need that peace and quiet. You need to come out, you need to be able to see the green. We see trees here, we see a lot of greenery. At the end of the day, a child doesn't want an artificial ground. A child wants a place where they can actually roll in the soil, get dirty. They want a place where they can step in the grass and fill their feet in the grass. Some children, growing up as children, we all climbed trees. So being able to see the tree, the shade, it's all, this is all things that entice a child. It's not all about, okay, I'll have my artificial grass here, I'll have my, I'll have my swings here, this way or that way. But if a child doesn't get that connection with that nature as well, I feel like it's something that they should be able to do. So you get, that child gets a feeling of, I'm in a place I can have fun, but I'm safe. Um, I don't think the industry is there yet. It's maybe getting there, but we don't see a lot of places that are being able to, Im to embed both as perspectives of things, the children and just, let's say, hospitality for adults in general. Many places are just focusing, as I said, are just focusing on mainly the the adult beats, let's have a restaurant, let's have a good, let's have a good view. But not many are saying, let's let's think about the children. Let's say, let do they have a swing? Do they have something that will make them have fun? Like will we be able to attract people like children in that way? So there's a lot missing from hospitality industry in that section. And one of the biggest things we grew up hearing was walk without play makes Jack a dull boy. So Every child needs to have that point where they can come out on the weekend with their parents and say, do you know what, mom and dad are going to have fun, but I can go and be on a swing. I can be able to just scream and have fun and actually feel like I had a weekend. I think what ends up happening is a lot is people just get anyone to just handle the children's areas that happen there. And there's not specialization. Children are very sensitive people. What they hear, what they do, what they say. At times they don't even know what they're saying or what they're doing. They just pick up a few things from what they see on TV, from what they do. So we need to be able to have people that are trained on ground on how to handle children. People who will know what to, like, think like a child in terms of marketing, in terms of things that will attract them. Um, I would say in general is, Children's market is definitely a market to be to, that should be tapped in highly. Now, last year, banks managed to turn a profit, despite the fact that a number of businesses were burning because of the impact of COVID-19 on their operations. Of course, this has made many people wonder or ask how the financial subsector managed to turn a profit in an environment where many businesses seem to be on fire. Today we try to put this in context to find out what drove that growth and whether it's growth that is sustainable. A bulk of players in the banking industry turned a profit in an environment where whole industries seem to have been decimated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, while many turned a profit, the picture was not as rose in 2020 as it were in 2019. Taking Stanbic Bank as an example, Uganda's biggest commercial bank saw a decline in its profit, though marginally, to 240 billion shillings from 259 billion shillings. But to players in the significantly depressed sectors such as tourism and education, this is a picture to envy. For instance, Tourism alone, according to the 2020 report by the Uganda Tourism Board, was projected to lose a million visitors, translating into a 3.91 trillion loss in 2020. To analysts, the banking industry's fair performance in a depressed economic setup has been attributed to some of the industry's earlier good performance, good yield on government securities, that is treasured bills and bonds, and sector technology-based innovations, including agents banking and digital-based or branchless banking. Looking back on the year, it is remarkable how much we have persevered and accomplished, not only in terms of financial performance, but also in our steadfast dedication to help our clients, communities, and employees. At the onset of the crisis, our immediate priority as a leadership was to keep our colleagues that work for the bank safe and healthy, and therefore we quickly switched to predominantly remote working, which our technology capabilities enabled. But even as the industry seems to have posted fair figures compared to other sectors, a number of pundits are still pessimistic about the sustainability and improvement of the industry's current position if the economy continues to underperform. 
In 2019, GDP growth figures were projected to touch 6% in 2020, but the economy only afforded less than 2% as the COVID-19 measures, coupled with the uncertainty that always surrounds general elections, delivered a twin blow to investor confidence and demand for goods and services. As a result, the banking industry is today contending with a heap of bad loans or those on the verge of underperforming, a situation that has led to the restructuring of a bulk of them. If, you, if we had to put ourselves in the shoes of a bank, when there is so much uncertainty, so much unpredictability, you are going to do a couple of things. One, you will try to make sure that if you lend, you lend to people you know really well. You have all the information, you have a good experience with them, typically, so they have already been served before, or you have uh, enough collateral and you, ha you can protect um, your assets. So, what that then does is that you are not lending new money to businesses. You're not helping business necessarily, you're not in the position to help businesses grow at this point in time. Additionally, central banks worldwide are also trying to be more prudential in their approach. They are asking banks to make sure that they have enough buffers to protect against any shock that might come. This reality partly explains the industry's expansion in the provision of loan losses and generally bad loans to 364 billion shillings from 215 billion shillings in 2019. Several players, however, now appear optimistic that the conclusion of a political season and the expansion of the vaccination program will gradually help drive economic activity back to normalcy. However, many still point to the role of the banking industry together with the Bank of Uganda, the industry's regulator, in support of the economy's resuscitation. For the banking industry to avoid becoming risk-averse, but continue to lend, and for the central bank to continue sending good signals for the banking industry to continue lending through further lowering the central bank rate. Well, it's time now to take a very short commercial break. Don't go away. Man and Mark is continue.